Uh, hello. Uh, today I got a video that's not exactly uh, Plan 9 related. Uh, more about sort of um, what I do with sort of hardware hacking in general. So I have four little devices here. Um, and while they all look different and kind of not really have different tasks, but not exactly the same ones, uh, these are all basically the same thing. So starting with this one here, I got this for my dad because he wasn't using it anymore. Just sitting around the house. Um, this is a thing from T-Mobile called the T-Vision. Uh, when I looked it up, I heard they don't actually sell these anymore, but they were just sort of giving them away when they are uh, stopped using them. And it is one of those sort of like, you know, the, the Amazon Fire Stick sort of thing. It uh, has a HDMI on it, one end. There's a mini USB on the other to power it. Plugs into your TV and runs streaming services of various sorts. So I got it home, cracked it open. And sure enough, there's four little through holes in here. And that's for a UART. So plugged in uh, a UART to USB adapter and could get into uh, the thing on it. Um, wasn't able to do much with it because the U-boot on it sort of locked up and it runs Android, which is pretty well locked down too. But this thing runs a uh, Amlogic S905Y2 processor. As I remember it, two gigabytes of RAM and a bit of flash storage, like about eight gigabytes. Um, and it runs uh, RTL 8822 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chipset. So that thing in there is a quad-core um, ARM A53 processor running at about 1.5 gigahertz or so. Um, and the other day too, I was at Walmart and saw this thing for $15. It's their on brand, so it's ONN. Got home. Within like two minutes, cracked it open, pulled it apart, and it also has three little through holes down there. Those are also for the UART. So this one was a little trickier because it ran at a higher speed. Let's see, it was, um, I have any notes here written down. This one was at uh, 921,600 bits per second for the UART. So it took a, a minute to find that one because it's kind of an oddball speed. But this also runs an AmLogic. CPU. It's the S805X2, uh, which is, I believe, technically an A35 processor. So it's also quad core, runs a slightly slower clock speed, and the A35 cores are basically like the A53s, but meant for low power use. So, uh, but yeah, same sort of setup HDMI on one end, mini USB on, or micro USB on the other for powering it. You can see this one has a little physical and you know metal antennas hooked to it um, whereas this one here has them sort of etched in onto the PCB on the end so but yeah went looking up what the differences was and other than like their ability to decode various videos and their maximum clock speeds the uh, registers for them for the memory mapped IO are laid out exactly the same so pretty much the same kernel could run on both processors so, and then uh, yesterday I was at uh, Goodwill, found a box on the shelf that just said 4K streaming, and it had this in it. And it was some sort of mystery box from China. You can find these all over. They're pretty cheap. This one's called this T95M 4K. Well, I looked up YouTube videos. I guess it can technically run 4K, but only at 30 frames per second, so not terribly great. Um, cracked it open. Um, sure enough, couldn't see what the CPU was right away because it had a heat sink on it, but it did have through holes and on the silk screen there, it says like TX, RX, and ground. Got into that with UART, and it is also running a AmLogic uh, S905 chip. I've seen reviews say either X or the W variety. Um, which again are nearly identical except for some added ability to decode other video formats. Um, this one also has Wi-Fi on it, but I haven't, like I said, just got it and haven't really dug into what exact chipset it's running. 
but this one has a lot of extra options for plugging in so it still has the mini usb it says it's for otg which is on the go um, it's got two usb a's a mini sd card slot on the back we have ethernet hdmi uh, optical audio a regular sort of jack headphone jack for regular audio and then a barrel jack for power but yes it's also um, quad core ARM processor from Amlogic. And the last one here I actually bought a couple of years ago, looking around for Raspberry Pi uh, alternatives. This one's sold by a company called Libre, and this one's called the Lay Potato, but it is also the Amlogic S905X. So this is like the original X. The other ones are X2, which I think are done with a. Uh, a smaller process this is like a 28 nanometer chip um, runs at about 1.5 gigahertz quad core rma 53 and it's laid out you know exactly like a raspberry pi so we have upio pins uh, usbs ethernet hdmi audio a mini usb for the power uh, it takes a sd card there's also a little spot on here for plugging an EM, uh, emmc module um, this is a comparable to a Raspberry Pi 3, except for this one comes with two gigabytes of RAM. Uh, picked it up because they advertised as being a little bit more open source. Um, these chips here use a Mali GPU, which is, uh, comes from ARM and there's open source drivers available for it. Whereas the, um, the Raspberry Pi one uses something, uh, proprietary from Broadcom. And given that Raspberry is so popular, people have reverse engineered it, but these ones you can just get open source drivers for them. But the point of this is sort of asking like, well, what is a computer? So as we know, a lot of people are now using Raspberry Pis to do all sorts of stuff that would be, you know, traditionally thought of as computer stuff. You know, people try to make a little NAS or they use it as a light sort of um, desktop computer, do game emulating, watch videos, all sorts of stuff. And, you know, it just runs a full on Linux install on it. These things here run Android, and they're the same processor. The, the same Linux would effectively run on all of them with almost no modification. Um, the only difference is, is like I think, if I remember right, the T-Mobile one has two gigs of RAM. This on one has half a gig. This Chinese streaming box has one gigabyte, but as you can see, there's actually uh, pads on here to install more chips. So some of these varieties may have more RAM. Um, but this one, especially given that it has uh, USB-A, you could plug in a mouse and keyboard. Um, you could plug it into a monitor with the HDMI, um, audio through the port there. I'm not sure this one has this wireless chipset does Bluetooth, but these two do. Matter of fact, they come with remote controls and while they have a little hole on the front, like you'd think for infrared, they actually pair via Bluetooth. So there's not really any reason that these things couldn't take, say, a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard or pair to a Bluetooth headphones or something. It's basically the only thing limiting you on these devices from being effectively used as a desktop computer is the software on them. So, um, but yeah. So this video is more or less just to point out, you know, looking at the devices around you, you know, yeah, there's a lot of stuff made and sold to be these kind of really dumbed down unitasker devices, but that's strictly a software limit. Um, there's not really any reason why you couldn't put software on here that would allow you to pair a mouse and keyboard, plug it into a TV and effectively have a full desktop operating system experience. You know, the RAM is kind of limited, but in a lot of ways, you know, I started computers a long time ago um you know i do remember when having 512 megabytes of ram was huge you know that would be a workstation class computer more than enough to you know watch some simple videos especially given that all these things have special video decoding hardware on board so that isn't even a limit on them um you know i ran web browsers with that if you can't nowadays it's mostly the websites are too bloated um I mean, the browsers are kind of bloated to, to try and handle that themselves, but um, 
the actual concept of going to a website reading you know hyperlinked text uh, does not require gigabytes of ram um, all of these are capable of it all of them are capable of running a basic you know office suite you should be able to answer emails do text messaging balance your checkbook whatever you need to do uh, these are all capable of it they all have enough inputs and outputs um, and if I wanted to bring this around to sort of like, you know, how would this work with something like a Plan 9 system? The limitations on these are kind of onboard storage. That's solved with Plan 9 because you would just use a shared file server. So like for Raspberry Pi systems, that's typically what I do is, you know, I put just, you know, enough to boot the system on the SD card. So I effectively use those read-only because SD cards are slow and writing to them too much burns them out. So I just load a kernel on and then read it. That's enough to boot the system up, contact the file server, and then use the proper hard drives on the file server for actual storage. Um, it also means I don't have to really update much other than I need to update the kernel. I'll write a new kernel to it, and then that's it. Um, all the actual software is read off the file server. So same would apply to any of these devices if say a nine front kernel was ported to them. So, and that's kind of why I play with this stuff is because, you know, how neat it is it that you can get a $15 device that would do, you know, 90% of what you expect out of a computer. Um, and it's just that big, runs off of, you know, five watts of power, um, and that's it. Basically, you could plug this into any sort of TV and turn it into a desktop computer. Um, I mean, TVs themselves often have ARM processors in them. That's why they're smart TVs and they can run Netflix on their own now. So it's sort of funny that people even buy these devices being that the TVs themselves often already come with enough hardware to do that. But anyway, uh, just something to think about. So look around your house, figure out like, hey, what, what really is these things? What's inside of them? Um, and you'll often be surprised that it's, you know, what you're using on a smartphone maybe five years ago and think, hey, I could do all that stuff on a smartphone five years ago. Why doesn't this do that? Um, I mean, in the case of the Chinese box here, it kind of does. These, this one here is sort of designed to kind of load up whatever apps you want um, and sort of watch videos from wherever you want, whereas these ones are kind of locked down to paid for streaming services. But really the only limitations on these devices is how locked down they are. And the, the Walmart one, there seems to actually be quite a bit of effort to uh, unlock them uh, not so much for the t-mobile one it's they, they locked it down pretty good and um i don't know if anyone like i said i think they stopped making them but i could be wrong uh, in which case it might be worth revisiting that one but anyway point is these are all the same cpu um so anyway hopefully you found that a little bit interesting and uh as usual uh have fun